Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, and welcome to the pod where we chat, argue, and wax poetic about the movies that we love, hate, or that are simply worth talking about. All movies have something to say, and we enjoy trying to analyze what they capture. Welcome to The Shatter After. I am Brandon Alvarado, the Scarlet fan here, and I'm so excited to be back here in The Shatter After pod to talk movies, and not just any movies. Halloween, horror, scary, supernatural theme movies because it's October. And in October, you talk about creepy things, you talk about ugly things, you talk about mystical things. But if you're like me, you talk about a lot of cool things. And this movie tonight that we're covering is cool. It's an old classic. I can say classic, but it's been like 17 years since it came out. From 2005, we are covering DC Vertigo's Constantine, starring Keanu Reeves and Rachel Weiss. That's the way you say it, I think. Um, but of course, as you guys know, I never talk movies alone. I always bring the best friends around, and I am accompanied by the one and only Mike Thomas. Howdy, guys. This, for the longest time, I didn't realize was even a DC movie until I discovered the Constantine TV show and the Arrowverse. So this was some weird homework in a strange time capsule to revisit. <laughs> nice. The mad and unique Doc Isaac. What's up, man? Good evening. And... Another friend from overseas, the great Ren Geekness, is joining us today at the Shatter After. What is up, Ren? Hello, guys. Thank you so much for having me. I am probably the biggest Constantine fan who had never seen Constantine until today. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. This is going to be a very great conversation. I'm glad that you all, you guys, both you and Mike, make it made it a point to say that they didn't know Constantine was a thing. Until they met Constantine in the Arrowverse, or at least in other, other shape in comic books. Because I think the first thing we need to say about this film is that this is not that Constantine. So let's make that very, very, very clear. <laughs> but at the end, we're here to discuss the movie. What we like, what we didn't like, what made it work, what didn't. And I think we should just jump right in. Starting Keanu Reeves, Rachel Weisz, Constantine came out in 2005 in a period of time where it was... A boom of superhero movies, a bunch of bad ones, but a lot of interesting ones. Guys, if you go back to that year between 2000 and 2005, X-Men, Hellboy, X2, Spider-Man 1 and 2, um, Cat Moven, Elektra, like a bunch of different superhero fair, Fantastic Four, all these Daredevil. movies came out, Daredevil, in a span of five years. Everybody's saying, guys, superheroes. Of course, we can all thank x-men for that right which which broke ground in in making superhero a very wealthy uh what's the word i'm looking for mind to be Power? able to break in right and get gold out of it yeah. um it was a renaissance it was a mutant sense. um but of course let's jump into this film 2005 constantine let's go around the table first and ren you're the guest so we'll give you first dips tell us Thoughts on Constantine. Do you remember the first time you watched it? Which was well, actually, it was today. Just tell <laughs> us what you think. <laughs> so, um, I I'm a big fan of Constantine in the comics. I, I love Hellblazer. I, I love this dude. Um, we've gotten a perfect Constantine on a less than perfect show in the CW. But as big fan as I am of Constantine, as big fan as I am of Keanu friggin' Reeves. I never seen this. Like it was one of those that oh, I knew it exists, but I just always missed it, and just never had an opportunity where like I have no reason to watch this just yet. It's on my <laughs> watch list, but um, I'll leave it for another for another day. Until Mike reached out and said, "Hey, you want to talk Constantine?" I'm like, "You're actually giving me an excuse to finally see it." <laughs> and so I watched it. Like you said, Keanu Reeves, Rachel Weisz, Tilda Swinton. It's directed by Francis Lawrence. I think this is a really cool movie. Uh, it's a different uh, interpretation on Constantine. And I say that lightly. I don't mean that as a bad thing or a good thing. They took their, they took some creative liberties because there are still a, a lot of similarities. It's just the bare essences of, of the outer look of Constantine that I feel changed. Namely, he's not a British brogue man. He's just a standard American guy. But essentially, I think this is a really cool movie with a lot of interesting themes, cool visuals that I think 
is very trapped in its rating, which is something I hate when people complain that about movies. I think it's very rare that movies are actually affected by their rating. This is one of those cases, uh, but I'm sure we'll all elaborate on, on such issues. But yeah, I think this is a really cool movie. I think it creates a very interesting atmosphere and it dives uh, ever so superficially onto those classic Constantine elements from the comics and Alan Moore that I think we all love. Isaac, talk to us, talk to us about Constantine. Well, first and foremost, I'm probably the only one here that haven't read anything regarding Constantine in the comic books. So I'm just watching it from a, well, uh, as we, you, you can say a um, movie only watcher, sort of like we always have anime only in with our uh, over at Amateur Taco. And honestly, I think it actually, uh, do I like it as much as We From Vendetta, which we recently uh, covered? I don't know if this is going to be uploaded before or after, but... Spoiler alert, I, V from Vendetta will not be out by the time this episode Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Mike. Sorry. You're good, man. Uh, just, just continue. But they'll, they'll get that conversation yeah, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I actually find it... Uh, find it enjoy, uh, enjoyable for the same reasons that uh, Leo or oh, Ren said I'm so used to oh, I'm tired, sorry. Uh, Ren said about the movie although from the perspective of a non comic book reader. Cool. Mike. I apologize, Ren. That was uh, dumb. That's okay. You're good, bro. You're good. Um, yeah. So, I'm not super familiar with Constantine. Um, so I didn't have a lot of expectations going into this movie. Get, finally getting into it, I did not really enjoy it. It's, I think Keanu Reeves, this is not a great performance by him. He's like, he's very static and he's very monotone with his delivery. And I just, I wanted more emotion out of him because the storyline I feel like would have required a little bit more, uh, especially we're going full spoilers. Like the idea of a character basically knowing that they can't get into heaven because he has a tr- he has trouble you know believing something that he just knows is a fact and he knows that these supernatural forces exist i kind of wanted a little more agency from from that character but i guess on the flip side i guess you could just say he's weary and just over it by the time we meet him um the villains didn't really stick out to me the the effects are very dated, which I can forgive, but the CGI just hits me over the head every five minutes. <laughs> it's like, tone it down just a little bit, guys. That's all I ask. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's fine. I like Tilda, Sw- Tilda Swinton. I like Rachel, Rachel Weisz. They were great. Uh, I just wanted a little bit more out of Keanu as our Constantine. No comment about who uh, the guy playing uh, the devil we were going to Storm spoilers. Now. Yeah, Storm Murray. In my book, at least, no matter uh, no matter the uh, movies, perfect hatching, uh, casting, casting for playing the devil, mm. especially an uh, interpretation like this. I, I think it's safe to say that we can all agree Peter Stormare is perfect on any kind of awkward, weird, over the top, role. over the top character, right? Um, yep. And and also I love the fact that we another it's a it's I think it's one of the first interactions between Keanu and Peter Stormare because I love the reunion in John Wick two yep. I think it was mm-hmm. so so again pretty and again how the tables turned in that in that yeah. in that particular um, duo um, so my thoughts on Constantine I f- I forgot how awesome this movie was <laughs> like I knew it was good but I forgot that it was awesome but also. Um, having grown because you got to think about it. I thought I, I believe I saw this movie in the theaters or or um, a little bit after it came out. Um, it's been 17 years, so I've grown to appreciate more the artistry of it, um, specifically the film, the the cinematography, uh, the script. Like it has a very tight script. Like there's there's very 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 tight script. Uh, the dialogues are great and in place. The, the not too many characters, but enough to keep the the story interesting. Um, and I love the fact that within that 
Age of Heroes. That was 2000, 2005, 2010. Um, this movie, not only was it, like Ren mentioned, maybe trapped in its rating, but it was also trapped in a period of time where audiences weren't really open for something that was out there. You know, we hadn't gotten to that point where Marvel can pull out Werewolf by Night out of their back pocket and everybody's just dropping money on it. Like, that era is not there yet. Like, Marvel had to open the floodgates for a lot of different brands to be able to do that. Um, which is another reason why Watchmen, even though everybody has their own thing, was really j- only became like a cult followed film as opposed to being a breakthrough film like it should have been, for example, because the audience wasn't there for it. So being restrained by all of that, um, I think they did a great job introducing this character and also doing it in, in also because in my mind, the screenwriters were also hamstrung. Because if you read a Hellblazer comic, which I haven't really read, I really haven't read Hellblazer, but I've read Sandman, which is where that character originally comes out from, right? Yep. Sandman, again, another cult comic book. It's not something that's mainstream, right? Um, I think Vertigo was originally its own publisher and then it joined DC, right? Yeah. It wasn't it was always... Bought. Yeah, it was bought by DC. So it was one of those indie that was doing hardcore interesting things. And the main John Constantine book was also done by Alan Moore for the longest time. So that's a very particular brand of character. So there's no way that in that age they were going to grab an actual Constantine storyline and make it into a movie. I would even say, even with the perfect, near perfect interpretation of Matt Ryan's Constantine in the Arrowverse, because, because again, it was great. Even then, a lot of people didn't tune in enough to give it its own show and if you and if you watch the show the the show is actually pretty good it's pretty decent it's not horrible it's pretty decent um but that one actually throws everything out there all the magic all the like it's literally deep into that lore of constantine this one couldn't do that so that's why it's like very black and white heaven against hell like they made it very specifically constrained by that but for even beyond those constraints it worked for me it worked in every level i love keanu and i love racial vice but more importantly the reason i like keanu's performance is because knowing what i know of constantine now when i watch the film i'm looking for the bits and pieces that make constantine a particular character i'm looking for the sarcasm i'm looking for the for the selfishness i'm looking for the not caring of others until it's too late. Like the little essences and bits and pieces that make that character great. And I think Keanu had them all. Specifically for an Elseworld American Constantine. <laughs> which is why it works for me. Because mm-hmm. the essence of the character was there. Now, yeah. it is dated, right? You got to talk. It's 2005. Like how how far have we gone with CGI animation and effects and stuff like that, right, guys? Yeah. Um, but now, if we if let's start with Keanu, right, and the idea of them being brave enough to say, okay, we're not going to do the British version. Which I wonder, I kind of want to go into that room, right? Like, what was the conversation to make that decision? Did they just pick Keanu because they wanted Keanu and they and they knew that Keanu can do accents? <laughs> Bram Stoker's Dracula. And they said, let's just make an American version. Um, how did you guys feel about the change in origin? Good. No, I was waiting to, to, cause you guys, you're commanding the show, so I was just waiting. Should no, I go, go ahead, Ren. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I, I think it really works, cause like you said, Bram Stoker's Dracula, you shouldn't force anyone uh, to do an accent they can't do. And accents are hard, so if you can't do it, it's no shame. I think they got Keanu Reeves because he just came off the Matrix, uh, so they were like on that hype, let's call it right. that. Uh, but like you said, the, the, the essence of the character is very much there. I really like how this story essentially is John Constantine is is traversing this crisis of faith but in this case he knows hell and and heaven are real he handles demons and 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 uh, angels all the time so 
you juxtapose that to what he knows and it kind of becomes a, a crisis of a fact if that makes any sense and i find yeah. that immensely compelling like i know this is real i know i'm them and i don't care which is in essence, like the only deviation from the Constantine of the comics that we, that we see, like you said, there's the selfishness, the sarcasm, the nonchalance, the being very blunt about truth, so like trying to drown Rachel Weiss in the tub for her to see the demons, but he's not telling her what he's going to do. He's just doing it. And Straight face. He's not expecting it. Like, and, and I like, I can, it's not, it's not like that it's the only reason to like or dislike or find John Constantine compelling, but to me, I put myself in this position and I think if I knew I was damned, if I knew that it was too late for everything, I cannot save myself, would I be angry against the world, against everyone like the John Constantine in the Hellblazer comics? Or would I be numb, emotionally numb to everything? And I'm much more, I, I would be this guy from the movie where I really don't care. Uh, I really don't care about you. I really don't care about myself. If I can't do anything. I'll just go by the motions and what hits me, I'll hit back, I guess. But you still have that cunning of John Wick. When he's put up against the wall, he's going to fight back. Not necessarily because he think he can change his outcome, but because he's not going to take a punch lying down. Um, yeah. If you dish something out, he's going to dish back. And I really like that. Uh, the visuals, like Mike said, like you said, they're dated. But at this point, to someone who's just seen the movie for the first time, it kind of became the charm for me, for, for the atmosphere that it creates. Such interesting angles and colors and visuals. Like, we see all these demons, heaven versus hell kind of movies all the time and shows now at this point. But the designs are still so unique. The little glimpses of hell, how he transports himself there and then back um, right before the, the third act, the help of Papa Midnight, played by the amazing... Uh, Jaimon Hansu, who has just played roles in DC for years now, by the way. Uh, he's moving from DC to Marvel. In another and DC movie, yeah. He's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah, awesome. Just everywhere, for 17 years, if not more. <laughs> yes. um, and out of nowhere, he co-stars with the Leonardo DiCaprio on this other movie. Like <laughs> Exactly. It's true. Exactly that. But yeah, so I, saw, I thought it was a really, really cool movie with a lot of interesting ideas. That because of the rating, not all of them are like fully explored. I like the idea. And by this point is a familiar idea. Maybe by 2005 it wasn't of angels are not all that good. Supernatural eventually did that to a T. But like by, by yeah. the end you get Gabriel, uh, Tilda Swinton's Gabriel, which by the way is such great casting. It would only be better if she was the devil. Uh, if she was <laughs> Lucifer. Um, uh, so, and, and she, all the motivation behind this character, I just wish... We had seen more from her in between that first meeting uh, when he's at the library and that moment where she turns and she spouses wa uh, or waxing lyrically about her motivations, which is very compelling. Like, she is not wrong, <laughs> um, according to what humanity is doing. And year, 17 years after, we've just been proving her point in many ways. Um, so it's just a very, very interesting movie that, it came out in an era where it was very unorthodox. It was very unusual for audiences to be given an anti-hero like this. And, and this yeah. film very much took a chance with its casting for people who knew the comic and with a protagonist that is not all that likable, let's be honest. That's what John Constantine is. He's never supposed to be likable, but he's an immensely interesting character. Um, so, so, Mike, so... Yes. Do you think that your reaction or the effect that the CG had on you would have affected you differently if you had watched it when it came out? No. And I just want to be clear. The CG doesn't ruin the movie. Like, it, How like, dare you? <laughs> like Rin, I like, mean, we would have thought. No, <laughs> no like, Rin, like Rin said, it, it, it is... It does add a certain layer of charm to it, right? Like, like the Mummy, for example, right? Yes. I know this uh, by the way, Rachel Weisz coming straight out of the Mummy. It, yeah, exactly. So that's why she wasn't in the third one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> no, but um, the the CG Anaksunamu. was just, and I, and I understand it because they're trying to make these supernatural creatures. So I, I totally get why they had to go heavy handed on the CG. I can forgive that. It's just I didn't find Keanu's performance as Constantine compelling. And that's just the biggest 
disappointment for me because Constantine, like Rena said, is a very fascinating character. Keanu Reeves is a good actor. But for some reason, it just never clicked for me in this movie. And again, maybe it's because we are meeting him at a point where he is numb to everything. And so the agency that I would have wanted to see from that character is just not really there. And I guess if, if I felt the supporting cast around him was a little bit stronger, it could have made up for it. But he's the lead and it didn't grip me. And I think that's just the, that's ultimately why the movie just never really worked for me. So what you're saying is that this should have been a sequel, not a, the first one in a, an adaptation work. Do I get that correct? I mean, maybe. I don't know what the... What what the prequel to this movie would look like? I mean, I'm <laughs> used to if it, this is sort of like it felt like uh, I have missed something here, uh, kind of deal. That's what I mean. Not even that. It's just I, like I'm not saying I feel like I missed something. It's just the way that he's portrayed. It just didn't work. That that that's really it this just wasn't just a fit for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's totally I, fine. I just want to. Yeah, that's it's, totally fine. I just wanted to see if I got it correct or not. It, what's fascinating to me, though, is because we, we keep talking about this is 2005. Very different landscape. You know what came out in 2005? No. Batman Begins. <laughs> and it's like, can you, can you imagine if we gave Constantine the same level of care that Nolan did Batman? And that, I think that's the thing that's frustrating is that the time this movie came out isn't an excuse for how I feel about it because there's actually another connection that I want to bring up now that you bring Batman Begins because there was someone once upon a time connected to a possible Batman movie that I think would be an incredible director for a Constantine movie and he's just riding the high of the whale right now and that director is ah. Darren Aronofsky yeah um, he always includes. Subtle and not so subtle religious commentary, for better or worse, in these movies. And I think Constantine is like the comic book property, like, fit right. for him. Either him, or if he's just too egregious for some people, another man who's writing the high of an animated movie this year, Guillermo del Toro. If oh, they don't yeah. let him do Hellboy, give him, uh, give him John Constantine. Give him please. Hellblazer. Yeah. Do it. That'd be amazing. Yes. Didn't uh, uh, weren't uh, the Toro meant to do uh, Justice League Dark for the longest time? Yes, but they didn't let him. I mean, maybe he needs to have a drink with Dwayne Rock Johnson because apparently um, <laughs> he can get things done. I can tell you, so I I can I can vouch for anything you might be suggesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, it's interesting that you mentioned Batman Begins and. Because I was that was one of the movies that I noticed that came out the same year. Yeah. But at the same time, it's I, I, I kinda I kinda find myself backing the writers here. Because everybody knows Batman. Some people know Constantine. You know what I mean? Like Batman is an iconic figure. Constantine is not. So they try to find all those elements that they can make that they can use to make him relatable or at least connected to that audience at that time. Um, but, but I do get what you're saying, uh, but I don't think it's lack of care. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's a mixture of definitely. I guess not clicking that's, the definitely. Wrong t- that's the wrong word. I guess I should say if they went in a more serious approach, because this movie feels very cartoony at times to me. Where I'm very surprised and, you say that, and I think that's that goes very, back that's to a very interesting take. But I think it goes back to what Rin said at the top of the recording, right? That the rating probably had a lot to do with that. If they could just go, you know, hard R, they probably would have been able to have a completely different tone for them. And again, agreed. That goes to the CGI, where it's like they they just feel cartoonishly fake, and so the stakes might be serious, but I'm just taken out of. So and it's I, a mixture of all of it, honestly. That just doesn't work. And I do want to hear your thoughts on these, Isaac and Ren, as well, because I, I'm glad. I think we keep going back, and I think it's not much the rating, but it's it's there's there's a sense of restraint in terms of the elements used to construct this character or this version, right? 
And, and I think it all goes back to the yeah. idea that will people accept this character if we go all in? Which, interestingly enough, the fact that we met him in Arrow and then in Legends of Tomorrow and then its own show. But not only that, Constantine has become a huge character in the DCU animated front. In the last, what, eight years, I would say? Yep. And Matt Some Ryan of the has best a lot. movies are with him. Yeah, and Matt Ryan is a is a is a big reason for that, right? He's the linchpin of that universe when you really think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Um, I, I still go back to the fact that he tricked the Flash to do another Flashpoint. Like that's just that's crazy. But um, but but they but it worked because that the animated universe, of course, has always been DC's um, escape. To do the most crazy of themes and craziest of things, right? Um, which, which, and also giving most fans what they want because some of them, eh, but most fans give them what they want. Apocalypse War. Uh, uh, yeah, hey, um, it led to uh, to the Superman movie, so I'm good with that. That's a banger. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I kind of want, I kind of want. We all want the same. We want Constantine as a whole, but I, I think why I defend the movie is that what the little that I got from the source material here was done right mm-hmm. enough for me to enjoy. It. But I also see how people that know more of the character, like you, Mike, and right, why you couldn't see the character there, uh, because again, it's become really big in the last couple of years. Um, now, Ren. In, in this idea of it being constrained, let's say that, well, not, let's not say. I do want to talk about the movie as a whole because I think we're talking about a lot of things. We haven't really talked to the movie that much. But I figure because of the themes that we're discussing, this is the perfect mind, perfect time to talk about this. We're getting a sequel, which... This is true. <laughs> holy crap. We're, pro- we're getting a sequel. So what do you want out of the sequel, Red? when it comes out before we go back into the film and talk about scenes and stuff because of everything that we've talked about thus far both in its qualities and in its issues this is a movie that is ripe for a sequel in today's movie climate like it has become a cult favorite everyone loves keanu reeves everything you said about john constantine and he became a big deal in the comics as well i mean he's dr fate in the comics last time i checked uh, or was at least for a period of time. Which yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, all of that, plus now we're giving comic book movies more chances, not just in terms of rating. We can go rated R now, and it can still make money. Keanu Reeves is doing rated R movies. He's doing a quintology of rated R movies. They're making money. Uh, people are ready for anti-heroes. I just saw another DC movie based on an anti-hero today, and they stick to the anti-hero nature of a certain character without betraying it. That's who John Constantine is. And now you can change so much. It's been 17 years. Do 17 years in real time. He can't yes. still be numb to all those emotions. Now he's angry because he's been fighting for 17 years after finding a new purpose, after saving that woman in the first one, and he still won't be saved. Now I want to see angry Constantine. I want to see him grow for numb to caring but giving the middle finger to heaven and hell both and not really wanting to destroy them all i want to see that nasty constantine that attacks without being provoked that's who i want to see and i think it's so ripe for potential and yes they can bring back francis lawrence but they also can bring back those directors i just suggested because they're both riding highs uh they're both taking chances Fan favorite directors are every day taking on comic book properties. Matt Reeves just signed a big deal uh, with DC for the Batman. So, for as much as I did enjoy this film, the way we, the the world we live in today, in regards to comic books, to comic book movies, to antiheroes, to what the audiences not not really us, not us, we'll lead up anything and we'll say whether we like it or not, but we we'll leave it. General audiences, they're ready to give comic book movies and to give less known characters a chance but in 2005 as much as i still think the performance is good we didn't love keanu reeves we didn't appreciate the greatness of keanu reeves yet not 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 any of us 
now we do. Now we're ready for that. So I would love to see him challenging himself and the notion of audiences in regards to John Constantine because it's it's right there. It, it's gold ready to be mined for the picking. So j- just do it. Do it. Don't put it Bring- into the DCU, but do it. <laughs> see, you're bringing in your inner Shia LaBeouf. Just do it. <laughs> He's in this movie. That's yes. A good yes. Yes. Somehow yes. He's in this movie. I- I do, I, I do find it hilarious <laughs> that he's playing even Stevens, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, I he's will embracing say this, that energy. Disagree, it's 2005. For as much as I, for as much as I disagree with Mike, whether I see Constantine in Keanu's performance, I don't see Chaz in in Shia's performance. Like that's yeah. not Chaz. Uh, there's um, uh, yeah. Vincent uh, uh, Pruitt, Vincent, some, like the other guy, the, the guy who gets killed by Balthazar at the convenience store. I'm oh, forgetting the actual bro, name, but he's that, right, guy, yeah. that guy, that guy, that guy is does, Chaz. Yeah, and, and it's funny because that's the kind of actor, I didn't want to mention this, he kind of plays the same role in everything he's in. Always the weird, you know, hermit, yeah. eyes rolled back or whatever, like, <laughs> I don't know. He was, he was riding high that 10 years. <laughs> Isaac, if you get a sequel, what would you like to see on the sequel? Great thoughts, Ren, by the way. First and foremost, I, while I uh, agree with Ren that uh, it's perfect time for a sequel now, considering uh, all the circumstances, I am a bit surprised if it had taken this long, to be honest, because until Wonder Woman uh, came out, this was the be- um, most profitable uh, comic book movie for Warner Brothers that it wasn't to Batman or Superman. So you would think that they would have done at least one sequel at that point, so to speak. When it comes to uh, wanting to uh, know what uh, what I really want, well, since I don't, uh, since I'm not a comic book reader, I don't really know what to say about that. I'm just uh, uh, more of uh, exploring the mythos in this regard. You know, just uh, go for the ride, kind of deal. I don't but, really know. What did you say? Um, no, no, no. no. Yeah, it was just, it's hard to me to say that what I want to see uh, when I don't uh, know what they can pick from. You get what I mean? Yeah. So do you want him to just let loose more than anything? Yeah. That's, that's kind of... Okay. Cool. So, I know it's a very particular question, Mike. Especially in your general field. Okay. But if if but if you get a sequel of Constantine, I mean you're getting it. I mean, and it's just for you. It's like it's gonna be placed. <laughs> um, what's what does that sequel look like? What would make you happy or more interested? Oh, uh, that is a good question. Well, again, Keanu Reeves, I think is a great actor. Constantine is a great character. So really, it doesn't take much to get me on board for this movie, especially coming off of the Renaissance of Keanu Reeves, right? We're in this new era, like Ren was saying, where we can't wait to see what he does next. And I I think Isaac has a point where it's kind of strange that they waited until now to do it, but I think now is the perfect time to do a Constantine sequel, as opposed to doing it in 2007, 2008, because then it's in the middle of the Dark Knight and Iron Man, and like, that's a weird era (laughs) for a Constantine sequel. It would have died. (laughs) But, um... Yeah, I, I don't think it takes a lot to get me on board. I'm just excited to see where they go and heartbroken that I don't get my Zatanna movie that they just canceled like a day ago. So oh. <laughs> we'll get the Justice League Dark someday. I yes. mean, who who is it to say that they won't uh, introduce Zatanna in the sequel and spin her off there? I mean, it's possible. That's true. It's possible, but I kind of want her in the DC movie. <laughs> and who, Fair enough. Who is, who is to say that this doesn't end up being uh, in the DCU for uh, some reason? No, please don't. No. I mean, uh, at this point, who knows? I don't want it either, but who knows at this point? <laughs> I love how he's like, I don't even want this. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm like, the here's this. He's, he's like the, he's like the, from Prometheus, the alien that just throws a thing in the water. Like, just destroy oh, yeah. this land. <laughs> Um, I'm just saying it uh, wouldn't be surprised if that happened, but yeah. I hope uh, I hope it's in its own continuity. Cool. So if so, here's what I want. 
I'm gonna pitch. I actually have a pitch. You guys ready? Hold on. Let me get Brandon's camera ready. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so I got a pitch. So here's my pitch for Constantine two, right? I agree with Ren. Seventeen years has passed. That's a real time, right? The reason Constantine was focused on just heaven and hell because he was fo- he was fighting to be saved. So that was the only thing that interested him. But now that he has a new lease on life, he's able to explore all the other aspects of the supernatural. So it's not just heaven and hell. So he's learning about dimensions. He discovers the house of mystery. He discovers all all these elements. So now this is actually warlock Constantine. Because throughout the 17 years, he's found a reason to learn. And... But learning all the truths of the supernatural, he understands that heaven or hell, even though they exist, they're not really the only ones running the show. So he thinks that everything that he's fought for in his own salvation is kind of meaningless because there's a lot of other stuff out there. So he becomes the solution with life. You can find a way to introduce the Astra aspect of it, where you link him to people dying and he's carrying a lot more weight. Maybe you switch. Maybe he loses Angela because you don't have to bring Richard Weiss back. But you can, like, like literally, we find him in a bar just drinking. He he picked up the cigarette again because he's just done. Like you kind of bring and you bring him closer in regards to the emotional weight that the Don Constantine from Hellblazer have, but it's still Keanu. So it's still close to what we know of Constantine in the theaters. And you bring a version of Satan in and the villain is a another magic user or someone like, I don't know, what's the what's the guy that's always dressed in blue that it's a it's a it's one of the one, it's one of his nemesis, um, <sighs> Dr. Faust, Dr. Faust, you bring someone like that in the mix and it's like but also because of the years that have gone through we can find him like we find him a lot of times he's just playing poker with demons like he's gotten to that this nonchalant like so he's grown more into this character that we know because of the lease on life so the lease on life has actually made his life more miserable and that's just what feels the energy to where the character has been so that way you can kind of blend those two identities together and move the story forward and move it away from the traditional heaven or hell I will I will add I will not take away anything that you that you said. I will add to it that we see we see also that he's power hungry because of all that you said, because heaven and yep. hell are not the only destinations. He's yeah. power hungry and he plays poker with demons to win so he can send a message. Yep. He's telling Lucifer, come for me and fuck around and find out, essentially. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. As you um, can see. The more you have around, exactly. the more you have exactly. find out. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny, and it's um, and, and it's funny that you mentioned that because it brings also the aspect of John Constantine that makes him very particular. A lot of people talk about John Constantine, and they talk about magic, the knowledge, and all that stuff. But Constantine actually has a superpower, yeah, which he has divine luck. Yeah, so exactly. you, which is why he is able to sometimes get away with the most outlandish shit. So they yeah. bring that into the mix, and yeah. And to your Zatanna suggestion, I will I will put up a casting. Oh uh, boy, that casting is an actress we all love, I believe, um, and that uh, she's been in the DC in the MCU. Uh, she's not going to be doing much from now on. So bring on. And this is someone we can't have the Alexandra Daddario dream casting. This it has someone to be age appropriate uh, to Ken Reeves. So bring on Rachel McAdams uh, to play Zatanna. Interesting. And to contrast uh, Keanu's, Keanu's, Constantine's journey through wrath and rage and, and a hate towards his destination. We see someone who sees that he's not lost. He's not a demon. He's still a man. He can still save his soul. There's always hope and all that because this someone sees himself as a demon. I suggest we introduce Jason Blood, yes. a.k.a. Etrigan the Demon, and he's played by another MCU alumni who's also not going to be doing much, 
Jude Law, who I think would be excellent casting as this character. When they were planning on making the Justice League Dark movie, I was like, Jude Law, Jason Blood, <laughs> Etrigan the Demon, like, that's, that's the your Demon Etrigan! You know, the well, movie that's you guys full on watching, rhymes. Full on <laughs> rhymes and blood. Full damage. on rhymes. Yes. <laughs> you need all the rhymes. You know, the movie that you guys are pitching, are, it's exactly what I wanted from the first movie. <laughs> Honestly. So, I'd be down The world for it. was not ready, Mike. It, it, it wasn't. Embrace the weird. That's my only suggestion. Is embrace yeah. the weird. Yeah. Don't shy away from it. J- just go for it. Especially, you know, because that's why, I guess, again, I look at it differently. Because, like you guys are saying, Constantine wasn't a very well-known character um, when the original released. But I feel like that's why they should have been able to get away with whatever they want. It wasn't Batman. You weren't. You didn't have to handle people's expectations of that character, right? There were no preconceived notions of what Constantine should be, which is why they were able to take liberties with it, which is fine. But I want them to just embrace the character and the lore and just go all out for it for the sequel. I'm glad that you mentioned that because the issue, if anything, was not with the character per se but because of the lore and how gruesome it is because it's a very very gruesome like it's you know what i mean and i think that's where the rating comes in ren like right like like that's because the character like you said you're right they took liberties with that thing why wouldn't they you know Mm. um but in a nutshell i think what we're all trying to say is the second the constantine tune the constantine two goal should be to let everybody know that Doctor Strange is a bitch. This is what a real warlock looks like. <laughs> John Wick, but with magic. That's the pitch. Yes. I'm there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my god. What a great movie. Okay, so let's go talk. Life. Let's go we'll talk about the old one now. So <laughs> 42 minutes in, let's talk about Constantine. <laughs> now, we talked about Tilda Swinton. Which yes. again, in the little time that we've seen her. What a great performance. And and also, this is one of her first big roles, right? At least state-wise. Because I know I she's check. I know she's been around for years, but that's the first movie that I've ever seen her in. Well, if, if I remember you that, because the very same year, in the year of our Lord, 2005, she premiered... Was it Chronicles of Narnia? The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Okay, that I, same I year? it was 2006 for some reason. Well, you see, but so, that, so it was 2005. That was like, so yeah. so she played two villains. I mean, she was in The Beach, she was in Vanilla Sky, she was uh, in Adaptation, uh, and then Constantine, let me go back further. So that was the first movie um, that I've seen her win. And, okay. But also... Playing that brand of character, you know what mm-hmm. I mean. That I I really enjoyed her as the naive yet kind of nuts Gabriel. Yeah. And um, uh, I like what you mentioned also, Ren, about the fact that up till that point, really didn't see angels as dicks. We just saw angels yeah. as angels. Um. Uh. So I think that was great. Um. Do you guys have a fa- uh, 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 a favorite Tilda Swinton performance? All of them. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that's see this guy she, right she, she, i don't think tilda swin has ever had a bad performance honestly though so. only a bad script yeah so like every movie i mean i do love her as the ancient one but is my favorite performance i i, I have to check because i'm sure she's given others that at least i mean she's amazing in snowpiercer um, yes her character is completely unnecessary but she is amazing in suspiria um she's a chameleon yeah, like she can be anything. Really. She can be anything, and that's just great. Hundred percent. Even the ancient one, which is a role I would not like expect out of Tilda Swinton, but she's actually yeah. really great in it. Yeah. She was even like she was good. Like the last thing I saw her in was the French Dispatch. She was even great there, and it's not a, a major. The Grand Budapest Hotel. She's awesome in that. Yeah. So again, yeah, I wasn't joking. All of them, legitimately, yeah. all of them. <laughs> yes. Um. Isaac mentioned Peter Stormare, which again, Peter, I, I think Peter Stormare deserves his own podcast <laughs> because of how many oh, interesting God. and iconic performances he has. But he was perfect as Lucifer. Um, mm-hmm. I do like how he he's kind of his wardrobe is kind of like Lucifer in the comics. 
apart from the white hair. Um, he tends to wear white, bright suits. Like, that's just the thing. Um, I think the touch because with the Because that's the whole thing about Lucifer. He sees himself as righteous. Like, he right. just wanted to please his father. Yep. And the whole thing about the feet being dirty. Like, that whole idea that even though he's dressed clean and white, he only walks in the darkness. I like and the that. way it drips to the water yes. and, it, and it burns and melts. Yes. It's so cool. Yeah. I also That's like the, that, like obviously I I knew I understood like because I know Constantine I knew immediately like oh you're calling on to him, but I like I like I read that the movie itself for people who might not be familiar they were like oh he's calling on to God he's being saved by God no no he's he's calling on to Lucifer to kick Gabriel's ass that's what he's doing. And it's and I'm glad that you say that because he's always he's looking for like he's still trying to win, like he's not yeah. trying to be saved. He's like, we got to kick this guy's ass. And and I so so that was I'm glad that you mentioned that because I actually fell on oh so he's praying because he's talking and he's looking up. Yeah. But then when he finished talking, he's looking down. And the funny thing is that Lucifer, being an angel, comes from up high. But when you see his feet, he did not come from the sky. <laughs> so, so that that was actually pretty awesome. Um, I, I love um, Francis Lawrence did a great job directing the scenes, especially in the terms of the transitions between the different worlds. Yeah, which to me, I love the 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 seamlessness that it happened. That even though at times the CG looked jarring, but well, the moments where he's doing the share treatment and all that stuff, um, the scenes were just great. The hints of detail, like I think Francis Lawrence was great for this film. Like he really wanted us. He really talked to us a lot through visual, without words. Yep. And I think some of the best directors, especially when you're when you're trying to show off a character that's known mostly for the environment that he's in, not just because of who the character is, like little things, like. The the way he knows the thing with the mirror in the first scene with the demon, yeah. like the whole yeah. thing with the mirror, um, when um, Angela goes to see him in his apartment, as soon as Angela goes in, the first thing that she looks is the door hinge and you can see the spell yeah. and you're and you're able to see those little things. Um, I don't know. Those, those, those little details are the ones that crack me up and I find like, oh, my God, that's cool. <laughs> So he did a great job. He did a great job doing this. Um, I like the, the 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 whole thing with the demons, like with the sulfur and everything. That's one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was a good one. So the last little note I want to ask you guys about Sweeter Stormare. I don't know if you guys have seen anything of Lucifer by Tom Ellis. No. Try the first well, episode. Didn't work for me. And that's cool. I love the show. I saw the whole thing. <laughs> my, I, my housemate loves it. He saw the whole thing. So no judging. Just for me, it wasn't my thing. So it's interesting enough because the playfulness that Peter Stormare brings to Lucifer, I kind of see Tom Ellis take on Lucifer there a little bit. Nice. Okay. Because, because I, I, I can kind of see how, because Tom Ellis' is Lucifer is all about play, yeah. you know, and, 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 I, and technically they're supposed to be the same Lucifer. So, so I, 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 I like that. I kind of saw that in there. Um, now, do you guys have a favorite scene in the film or a scene that you think that you thought I like the scene, the construction or, or whatever? I mean, to me, it's either got to be the, the scene with Lucifer or the, the one with the cats where he eventually goes to hell to see Isabel and, and learns the, the whole thing that is going on with, with the ghosts and, and that they saw them. Um, that's like when, when I finally got, okay, that's why Rachel Weiss is in the movie. Because up until then, I'm like, I love this actress, but like, <laughs> what's the point of this character? And, oh, okay. Uh, but those two scenes... She has a cat. Really <laughs> stand out to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She has a cat. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, Isaac, do you have a favorite scene? Well, going back to Stormer and Hilda Swinton is actually the confrontation between the two because uh, the confrontation in the two is essentially as two scene stealers uh, eating up the scenes against each other. And it's uh, 
short, epic, and impactful. Yeah. I like the fact that the bombastic element of the finale was brought on by the character, but not executed by the character. Yeah. Which kind of like highlights how big the world is beyond the character. Yeah. And it kind of brings that dimension of, yeah, Constantine's the lead and he knows a lot of things, but he's a ant when yeah, compared exactly. to all of this. But the whole point is, is that he still gets away with making them look bad, which is kind of like the point of Constantine. Um, Mike, did you have a scene that you enjoyed the most? Um... There's a there's a decent amount that I did enjoy in this movie, but aside from my complaints, I love the the opening right where he is like exercising the demon with the mirror and just seeing yeah. how experienced he is. Like this guy's been around the block a few times, and right? I love how frantic and terrifying that scene really is, and it's like you don't know what's happening or what his plan is until it's over, and it's like okay, we get it, and I think that's that's one of the coolest moments in the entire film for me. Uh, whenever Tilda Swinton's on screen, whenever Digimon Hansu's on screen, uh, because the they're balance. just they're just so great. Um, but yeah, I think the, the first and like you guys said, the scene with the cat, right? But like our first time, like really entering that realm, I think is just so well executed and well done. Um, so yeah, that that I would if I had to choose one, it would be the opening scene with him um, and the first demon. Sweet. So, so my favorite moment, it's literally a moment. It takes like two seconds because that was the one moment that apart from the fact that, yes, I was sold on him as Constantine throughout the movie. That to me was the greatest Constantine move of the entire film. So it's in the end is right at the end of the conflict between um, Lucifer and Gabriel. When Lucifer tries to take him and God and God literally says no. As he's lifted into the heavens, he flips Lucifer the bird as he's going into heaven. Like that, that was like, like <laughs> it was such a dichotomy within the scene. Like, so this guy, right, that sacrificed himself to save someone else, but also think about himself. God is letting him go to heaven because he did something righteous, but he's flipping Lucifer the bird. Like, like to me, yeah. that was just that was just perfect. That's that, Constantine. He's the guy yeah. who flips Lucifer the bird. Yes, yes. Everybody's scared. Everybody's whatever. Like yeah. it's 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 like that arrogance of I don't care if you're bigger than me. You will not treat me like I'm not your equal. You and I are just two beings in this mass universe. Like I, that yeah. arrogance is just so great. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> By the way, I, I was reading uh, the Wikipedia uh, to see if there was any more information on the sequel uh, besides Keanu Reeves. And there is. As recent as September, last month, um, Keanu Reeves is set to return for the lead role, but Francis Lawrence is also set to return as director. And here's some not so good news. Uh, something to keep uh, an eyebrow up for it. Akiva Goldsman is returned to write the screenplay uh, and will also produce alongside J.J. Abrams. Um, so yeah, let's. Um... Hey, J.J.'s been attached to the to the dark universe forever now, right? Yeah. In the in the DC. Yeah. <laughs> In the DC space, so like I, I don't I, mind I don't mind him producing. To be honest, yeah. I, I, the thing that worries me is Akiva Goldsman writing. Yeah, it's, and it's interesting because Akiva Goldsman did not write the film, the first one. I don't think so. I'm no, no, he didn't. It was it was it was it was, oh, a, it, okay. was a, it was a different duo of people. Akiva was just an executive producer. Um, yeah, he didn't. You're right. Yeah, so I don't know. We got, we got to bring someone else to write this. As long as it's not Winter's Tale, uh, Akira Goldsman, or whatever it was that the movie when uh, Will Smith played the devil and uh, the white horse. Yeah, that, and all that's, that the one. that's, that's the one. That's the one. You are correct. You know, I, um, I'm just wondering because we were talking about, like Isaac mentioned before, how they how they're coming so many years later to this movie. Do you think? J.J. Abrams is like, let's do Constantine because he's been working for like seven years on this universe and not a single thing has been made. 
Could be. Could be. But to be to be fair, Cubicles Man has written a lot of crap, but he's also written good stuff. Um, Tell me. Obviously, he did The Dark Tower, uh, which wasn't half bad, but it wasn't good either. Uh, Transformers The Last Night, The Rings, The Fifth Wave, The Divergent Series, Winter's Tale. But then he also did Angels and Demons, I Am Legend, Cinderella Man, I, Robot, A Beautiful Mind, uh, Lost in Space. And then Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. <laughs> so uh, a, a tricky balance of things. So we got so he we got a guy here. With DC properties, let's say. So there's a guy that's been all over the place. Is what you're trying to say? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So um, I don't know. I think we need fresh blood to sacrifice at the low. altar. No, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I, I'm in, I'm I, I like Francis Lawrence and what he's done with the world. Um, I like Keanu coming back. I don't know about Akiva though, because yeah. Akiva did not have a pen on hand for the first one, so he wasn't part of what made it work. So that's my only yeah. concern. That's my only concern of any. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Thank you, Wikipedia. Um, but uh, I, I do, I do want to say that I'm excited. I wouldn't be surprised if this is something that Keanu mentioned. Because you got to think about it, Keanu now is 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 the is one of the biggest stars. Didn't he say in a talk show that he wanted to yeah. play Constantine? He was the he was the one that that I first heard mentioned in the sequel, which was in Colbert, I believe, uh, when he was promoting the Matrix Resurrections, yeah. which was one legacy sequel that should never been made. So, but so I so the fact that Keanu wants to do this might be the reason that Francis Lawrence is back, yeah. Because they probably have they definitely work well together, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm excited to see what they come up with because I think the elements and the bones of something greater lie within this 2005 film, which I think is what we've all agreed on, right? Despite of our differences and stuff like that, is that there's a lot of good stuff here that we can make something better. In the yep. future, so hopefully we get that. Um, the one thing I would say is my one complaint: the soundtrack kind of sucks. The soundtrack doesn't <laughs> do anything for me. Uh, in this, I'm film. a score guy, and I was checking the score, and mm, nothing really. Yeah, nothing. Up. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. awful by any means, but yeah, there was not there was not a single memorable yeah. track in there. For me. I mean, it's two composers I really like. It's Brian Tyler and. Uh, Klaus Badelt. Um, what have they done? Uh, uh, well, Brian Tyler has done a ton of stuff. Uh, actually, Klaus Badelt, I'm not finding what he did recently, but then we go to Brian Tyler. Um, he did, let's go for more recent. He did Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. He did Scream. He did Escape Room. He did F9. He did Those Wish Me Dead. Uh, Rambo Last Blood, Ready or Not, um, The Mummy. Uh, not a good movie, but a good score. Um, the Fate of the Furious, Power Rangers 2017, Now You See Me 2, uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. Uh, a he lot did of Avengers Age of Ultron. He did. Uh, oh, yeah, that's so the one. The must have been sick that year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. He did Expe all the Expendables. He did uh, Thor the Dark World. Not one of my favorite MCU movies, but maybe one of their best scores, if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, Iron Man 3. Uh, which is the best Iron Man score, to be honest. And I say that given Ramin Jawadi did the first one. So he's done a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah. Also, the Chippendale score is obviously pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. Me. Nice. Nice. Are we talking about the recent uh, CGI live yes. action hybrid? Yes. I, I should check it out. I should too. It's I haven't so seen it. Shame on me. It's so it's, good. It's fun so game. much fun. <laughs> um,. I think that's my one, and that's my one like qualm, right? There was nothing in the soundtrack, and I think that's the one thing from the source material that I would have liked to be translated. How do you not have a choir epic score in a Constantine movie? That's literally the most obvious thing you could do. That, <laughs> or what I was going for, because that's that's like a very good point. Or go back to the punk rock roots of Hellblazer. Because the whole thing was that he was in a punk band or a metal band, touring and all yeah. that stuff. Like, bring that essence, that energy. You know what I mean? And like that, that's punk like rock music, but with a choir on top and a little bit of organ. 
Yes. Yeah. Go- Goss- yes, Go- damn Goss- it. Goss- yes. Gospel punk. Do it. Goss- Do it. Go nuts. That would have been um, amazing, honestly. That, you yes. know what? If that was just the score, you don't have to change anything else in the movie. Does anybody, have, <laughs> does anybody have Keanu's email? I think we need to send him this. <laughs> we need to send him our thoughts. <laughs> I, I would have sent a ton of stuff his way if I have his email. <laughs> I'll see if I can sneak it one day. Um, so, so last little thing. Um, unless you, and if you guys have anything else you want to bring to the table, definitely please bring it. Um, I like that they didn't go the traditional damsel distress route with Angela. They did mm. give her some agency. Um, I like that it was teased that there was chemistry, but I like the fact that they didn't dive into it because of who Constantine is. So I do like, especially again going back to that period of time where this movie came out, they didn't fall for those common tropes. So I do have to salute the film for that. Even at the end where you kind of see like Angela wants to be, sadly they wanted to use Rachel to be that, but they presented her that way so that Constantine can just ignore it. (laughs) So I think that was a good touch. Which is a trope that's so Uh, easy. Go ahead. I just wish they could have used more of once she starts seeing the demons again, uh, there was more to it uh, where she could help John in a sense and not just eventually become the the womb uh, for the... Of the Mammon. Side. Mammon. <laughs> yeah, Mammon. Don't say it that way. You and I know what that means. <laughs> but yes. In, in Portuguese, it means something. I, I don't know what it means to you. I, 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 I'm from Puerto Rico. In Portuguese. Oh, I'm from okay, Puerto Rico. It's probably the same because both languages come from Latin. So got yes, it, got it. yes, <laughs> kudos. <laughs> um, but hey, guys, anything else on Constantine? It's it's a movie. <laughs> there's, it's a movie. There's, some, there's some fun <laughs> elements to it. Not hey, favorite, Isaac, how was the budget? <laughs> no comment. Could have been a little bit higher, but you know, it's a fun time. <laughs> the one film that needed. You got to listen to our Avengers podcast, Ren. You'll understand. (laughs) But, Isaac, any any final thoughts on Constantine? If there is one actor that I hope returns in a sequel, now that I'm going back at it, it's Stormer. Honestly. Fair. I'm never going to forgive Ren for suggesting Rachel McAdams as Satana. Because I'm never going to get it. And I'm just going to be mad for the rest of eternity. I'm sorry. (laughs) Personally, personally, I kind of, I like Rachel McAdams, and I can see her as Satana, but personally, there is a certain playfulness that Anna the Armas brings to a lot of her performances. Oh, nice! That Satana calls for. A reunion remember, uh, with because, Keanu Reeves. Yeah, <laughs> and and remember, Satana. Is a Not literal a good movie, but yeah, they, they, <laughs> movie. I like knock knock. <laughs> knock knock is <laughs> now. Satana is is a literal artist. She plays the show, you know, and and I think that Anna the Armas has all the assets and the qualities to bring that character to the that's fold, true. you know, I and also that that, that and that's the kind of twist in that cultural twist, right? You can play into her roots as opposed mm-hmm. to just making it an American character and bring some diversity and dimension to the character. Also, when it comes to her saying stuff backwards, it would sound very interesting being said by Anna Darmus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the accent for sure. Yeah. The, the way you phrased that to last talk just sounded wrong, my friend. What? The, I, the it ass- sounded right. Isaac I, just I, has a very dirty mind that nothing goes through his ears without well, being well here's the here's the thing though i am counting all the okay i'm gonna stop um <laughs> ren final thoughts on constantine uh i'm going to have to agree with the the very vocal very minority that i've heard speak about this movie over the years because everything i've ever heard about this movie was much like uh mike thinks about it like oh it's all right it's a movie blah blah like i i thought i really enjoy it i don't think it's great i think it falls into some trappings of of the rating it doesn't fully go hard because it has to be digestive for general audiences it has to have a conventional structure in many ways but i just think 
in what it does deliver from the world of Constantine, it's very interesting, both in its visuals, in its themes, and Keanu Reeves nails the performance of this very sympathetic, tragic, and unlikable anti-hero. I, I'm, with that, I'm going to segue to my final thoughts, is that I, I kind of was surprised how much of a dick Keanu Reeves can be as Constantine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when, when he's talking to Angela and she goes, can you just point me in the right direction? And he just goes, he points at the door, <laughs> like just leave. Like that was just perfect. Um, but yeah, I think more than anything, I am glad that I was reminded that we have not gotten one bad live action Constantine. We got two. They've both been great. They all have their own great stuff. And I'm glad that I've been able to enjoy them both. That's my final thoughts. Guys, Ren, thank you for joining us. It was so awesome having you here. Um, If people wanted to find you in the webs, where can they find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter, Letterboxd, and the YouTube at Ren Geekness, where I talk movies and all sorts of nerdy stuff. I just uploaded my um black adam review uh right before this episode so it should be there by the time this is up thank you guys for having me uh and i'll be happy to be back whenever you have me again awesome awesome isaac if people want to find you where can they find you well uh, you can they can find me over at emblem maniac on twitter and uh well find my ranking at Wilbum entertainment and well that that's that mike thomas Yes, sir. You guys can find me at Novice Cinephile everywhere. YouTube, Letterboxd, Twitter. Uh, Instagram is the Novice Cinephile because I got sniped by somebody else. <gasps> but, you know, that's okay. You can also find me at uh, The Amateur Otaku where we're doing live streams every single Sunday. Uh, talking My Hero Academia, talking Spy Family, talking Bleach, Chainsaw Man. It's a fun time over there, so don't miss that. And yeah, we've got a lot of stuff going on here at the Chatter After for Halloween. So don't miss all of the episodes. Constantine, Werewolf by Night, Moon Knight. It's been quite a ride. But yeah, that's where you can find me. And you can find me at the Scarlet Fan 52 on Twitter. Um, and you can find the pod at the Shatter After. We talk movies, we talk shows, games, stuff that we love all the time. It's a bi-weekly show. We are putting a lot more episodes in October because we have a lot of spooky, awesome stuff that we wanted to cover. So make sure you find us at the Novice in the Cloud Network because the Shadow After is there for your likeness. Guys, thank you for joining us. We will see you next time and keep watching movies. Peace. Peace.